Well, fixes are in the air. Everyone knows the thing's fucked. So how are we going to fix it? Everything has gone wrong. Democracy online, monopolies, surveillance capitalism, inequality, the looming threat of unemployment. Not a lot of good news out there, but we need to fix it, because if we don't, then the system's going to get even worse. Uh, everything needs to be fixed in the digital world. It's gone totally wrong. Four or five big problems. The looming threat of unemployment, massive economic and cultural inequality online and offline, surveillance economy, and the cultural crisis of social, cultural and political crisis of social media, the disappearance of truth the professionalization of trolling and uh, fake news wrecking democracies. Well, I lay out a strategy in my book. There are five core strategies. The first is regulation through government, through new laws. The second is through innovation, through entrepreneurs creating companies built around better principles and the first generation of digital companies. The third is through more education, the fourth is through consumer empowerment, and the fifth is through citizen engagement. We won't fix our digital future just through regulation or innovation or education or consumer power or citizen engagement. You need a mix of all five. Think of it like a stack in technology. And a lot of those themes are intermingled, sometimes they're hard to separate. They're like a ball of yarn or a series of balls of yarn that have got mixed together. So I laid out my argument in three books, my three previous books, Cult of the Amateur, Digital Vertigo, and The Internet's Not the Answer. In Cult of the Amateur, I argued that a, disintermedi a disintermediated media would create cultural decay and chaos. You would undermine truth, professionalism, uh, and the world would become radically relativized, which is very dangerous for democracy and also culture. In Digital Vertigo, I argued that social media was actually anti-social media and was actually compounding the atomization and individualization, the loneliness in contemporary society. And in The Internet is Not the Answer, which was my third book, the third in a kind of trilogy, I argued that the internet economy was creating a, a winner-take-all world in which a tiny handful of companies dominate everything. Uh, the opposite of economic democracy. So in the internet is not the answer. I argued that the ironic unintended outcome, consequence of the digital revolution is more inequality rather than a more level playing field in either economic or cultural terms. So it's a bigger question than just the internet. The internet's a I don't really like using that word anymore. It's a bit archaic. Uh, the network, the digital network, is our collective future. You can call it the internet. People will probably use other words as well. But it's a book about how to fix the big problems of the digital revolution, whether it's the cultural questions associated with a disintermediated media, whether it's the antisocial nature of social media, or whether it's the inegalitarian consequences of a winner-take-all economy. As an author, one always, of course, wants to be ahead of the curve, to be uh, writing ideas and arguments that nobody else has thought of. So whereas there are a lot of, now, a lot of books now coming out basically repeating what I've been arguing for the last 10 years, I'm focusing on solutions. We know the problems. The, the real issue now are the answers.